Corrigonus bazola was a species of freshwater whitefish in the family Salmonidae. It was endemic to the Lac du Bourget in Savoy where it was pelagic in deep water. The maximum length recorded for this species is 32 cm. It is known from specimens collected in the late 19th century, and was reported by fishermen to have disappeared in the 1960s. It spawned in January and February, on the muddy bottom of the lake, at a depth of 70 to 80 meters. The Glaucus macaw is a large, all-blue South American parrot, a member of a large group of neotropical parrots known as macaws. This macaw, generally believed to be extinct. It is mostly pale turquoise blue with a large, grayish head. The term Glaucus describes its coloration. It has a long tail and a large bill. It has a yellow, bare eye ring and half-moon-shaped lappets bordering the mandible. Expeditions by ornithologists to southwestern Paraguay during the 1990s failed to turn up any evidence of the species. Furthermore, only the oldest residents of the region had knowledge of the macaw, with the species last recorded in the 1870s. The bird's disappearance probably is linked to trapping of live adults for the wild bird trade and the wholesale felling of the yate palm, the nuts of which appear to have constituted its main food. Dutoit's torrent frog was found in and around rocky montane streams. Eggs are laid on wet rocks close to torrential streams and waterfalls, and the tadpoles develop on the rocks, out of the water. Reflecting its evolutionary distinctness and endangered status, it was last seen in 1962, despite later surveys. Because the habitat of this species appears to be generally in good condition, its disappearance might have been caused by disease such as chytridiomycosis. The red-bellied grassle opossum is an extinct species of opossum that was native to Jujuy province, in Argentina. Its forest habitat has been destroyed, and it was last seen in 1962. Very little is known about this species because of the limited number of observations of it. It apparently breeds in Korea and eastern Russia and is probably a relic species that had a wider distribution in prehistoric times. Some think that this species is extinct, although occasional sightings are reported, including a number of recent reports from the interior wetlands of China. Due to the persistent reports of the species' survival, it is listed as critically endangered. However, the crested shellduck has not been definitively sighted since 1964. It is believed to be migratory, traveling from Siberia in the breeding season to Korea and southern Russia for the winter. It is believed to eat aquatic vegetation, mollusks and garbage. It has been suggested that this shellduck may be a nocturnal feeder. This species is threatened with extinction due to habitat loss, hunting, and overcollecting. Like all brown bears, Mexican grizzlies were omnivores. Their diet mainly consisted of plants, fruits and insects, and it is reported that it was very fond of ants, like most brown bears. Occasionally it fed also on small mammals and carrion. Females produced one to three cubs every three years or so. Because the bears hunted the cattle from time to time, they were considered as pests by farmers. 
Grizzlies were trapped, shot and poisoned, and had already become scarce by the 1930s. Its former range decreased to the three isolated mountains Cerro Campana, Cerro Santa Clara, and Sierra del Nido 80 kilometers north of Chihuahua, within the state of Chihuahua. By 1960, only 30 of them were left. Despite its protected status, the hunting continued. By 1964, the Mexican grizzly was regarded as being extinct. With skin colors ranging from a steely gray to a dark green and even brown the Navassa Island iguana possessed a bony-plated pseudo-horn or outgrowth which resembled the horn of a rhinoceros. Navassa Island was visited in 1966 and 1967 and no animals were present. An entomologist visited the island again in 1986 and saw no signs of any iguanas, although he was not specifically looking for them. An extensive search again in 1999 failed to find any iguanas. Military occupation of the island prior to the 1960s may have been responsible for its demise, or years of mining guano for fertilizer, the introduction of feral dogs, goats, and rats may have also been to blame. Dr. Robert Powell's research suggests that the iguanas disappeared before the introduction of feral species, as a result of habitat change or hunting by man. Noted herpetoculturist David Blair maintains that some of these animals may remain in captivity somewhere in the world, but admits they would be very aged specimens. The widespread introduction of firearms and, later, motor vehicles marked the start of the decline towards extinction of the Arabian ostrich. Earlier hunting methods with bow, arrows and dogs had allowed most animals of a group to escape, but rifles enabled poaching and excessive game hunting to diminish the species into extinction. By the early 20th century, it had become rare. In Roman times, there was a demand for ostriches to use in Venatio games or cooking. These birds usually would have come from the North African subspecies rather than from the Arabian one, as the latter was only found in the unruly frontier regions of the Roman Empire, although it is to be noted that much later, the plumes of the Arabian ostrich were considered superior material for hat-making compared to those of the North African subspecies. After the rise of Islam, the Arabian ostrich came to represent wealth and elegance. Ostrich hunting became a popular pastime for the rich and noble and eggs, feathers and leather were extensively used in handicraft. Arabian ostrich products, as well as live birds, were exported as far as China. Growing as large as 8 cm long, the St. Helena earwig was the world's largest earwig. It was shiny black with reddish legs, short elytra and no hind wings. The earwig has not been seen alive since 1967 despite searches for it in 1988, 1993 and 2005. It is possibly extinct due to habitat loss, by the removal of nearly all surface stones for construction, as well as predation by introduced rodents and centipedes. Little is known of the behavior of this flying fox but it is likely to have fed on the fruits, flowers and foliage of evergreen shrubs and trees typical of the limestone forests that occur in the northern part of Guam. Nor is much known of its reproductive habits, but an individual observed in 1968, when a female was shot, was accompanied by an immature individual which suggests that there may have been some ongoing parental care. When it was more plentiful it was hunted by humans for food, which may have contributed to its extinction. Another factor may have been the introduction into the island of the predatory brown tree snake. 